Hello and welcome to the first in a series of video tutorials looking at the Rube Box 2D editor. And in this first video we're just going to go over the workspace and these panels that we have here and we'll look at opening a few files and saving a few files. So when you first start the program uh, you'll see something like this which is all of the panels open. Uh, this is probably not the way you would use the program, you'd just have a few of them open at a time. Um, so we can close and open the panels by uh, using the keyboard with the uh, shortcut keys shown here to close and open these panels. And <coughs> we can also do that with the uh, menu here. So you can move them around. Um, if I want this panel down here, I can shift it down there. You can drag it with the mouse. As long as there's enough room you can place the panel somewhere else. And you can also, I think if you hold the control key down, uh, this is Linux that I'm using here, I'm not sure about other OS's, but at least on Linux, I pr think probably Windows as well, maybe it's the alt key on Windows, uh, you can actually drag these so that they float out of the panel, uh, out of the window completely. So you can even put them on another screen if you have multiple monitors. And, sometimes it can be handy to put them on another screen. So anyway, I'll put that back there. And you can drag them on top of each other. So, oops, actually double clicking brings them out to a floating window as well. So we can drag them on top of each other like this. And that will give us tabs at the bottom or tabs at the top if you're using a Mac. And then you can um, keep the panels all in one place, which is a little bit more efficient. That's the way I like to, to use things. So, what are these panels? Um, start with this one down here. Uh, this is just a message log which tells you um, tells you what version you're using to start with. And as you're using the program, it will tell you down here you'll see um, errors or warnings or sometimes um, the program can even give you little helpful tips about some things. Um, and everything will appear down here and you can turn on um, in the options here you can turn on uh, these debug messages which will show you other interesting things about what the script log is doing and uh, other detailed information that could be handy um, if a problem arises but most of the time you don't really need to look at that so I'll just hide that with the F10 key and so next let's look at this one here we have help and there's actually quite a lot of help in here and you can see that by expanding all these um, options here and reading about whatever um, topics that you need to, to look at. <coughs> so that's probably pretty self-explanatory there so I'll close that one and we'll go over here we have context help and this will show you some help in context that is um, depending on what you're doing right now in the editor you'll be able to see different help so to do that uh, let's open a file and I've made a bunch of files here that we can use for this and I have a couple here document A and document B which I'm going to use so you can open files by dragging them uh, straight onto the document area there like that so now we have two two documents open document A, document B and there's just a shape in there that kind of looks like an A and a B so we can easily tell them apart so now that we have a document open uh, the context help over here has changed to let us know what we can do right now so I'll just go to document A and what I mean by context is that when you say if I select something here you can see the help changes here depending on what I'm doing so if I start to move this or rotate it uh, the help will change to let me know exactly what I need to know at that time so that's context help and um, we'll close that now what are we left with here script and properties and the items panels. Now these three panels here are 
a little bit different because the way they work is that they are specific to the document that you have opened here. Uh, and these documents can be viewed like this as well if you like. Uh, or we can use Control T to uh, fit them all in the workspace, tile them in the workspace. And we can see that when we click on these windows here, we can see the titles of the panels are changing to reflect which document we're looking at right now. And if I have some script in here, we can see that the script, uh, let's make that a little bit clearer. This is the script for document B. And then if we come over here, we have script for document A. So each one of these panels here is specific to the um, to the document that we currently have active, and properties here as well. So we can see I've selected something here, so we can see the properties for it there. When I move over here, nothing's selected, so the properties are empty. And of course, the items here will also be showing us. Um, the items for whichever document we have active. So let's look at these panels. Um, no, uh, sorry, no, we'll, we'll be looking at these panels and each of these panels in detail um, in a later video. Um, so I'll get rid of those and we can hit the F6, 7, and 8 keys to hide those. And for now, what I wanted to do was just to look at one document and we will take a look at um, just how to move the view around and we'll get back to those panels in detail in a, a later video. So to move around you drag the view with the right mouse button and to zoom you can use the mouse wheel or you can hold down the control key or the command key on the Mac and move the mouse up and down. So moving it sideways doesn't change the view very much. It's just up and down. So this control drag can let you zoom in and out very quickly, which is quite handy if you have larger scenes. Uh, you can also hit the home key, which will bring everything in the scene to fit the window. It will resize the view to fit the scene rather. And uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, we can hold down the shift key and drag the right mouse button. So all of the moving and zooming functions are on the right mouse button. So for example, if I want to zoom in on the bottom right corner of this A, I can hold down shift and drag with the right mouse button to select an area of the screen. And then when I let go, the view will jump into that area. So I think that's about it for that. Oh, and if you don't like the direction that the mouse zooms, which uh, probably a lot of people might like to reverse those, you can do that in the options dialog here, um, just like that. Right, so now, uh, one other thing I wanted to look at before finishing up this video is the different types of files that you can save as. We're not going to edit anything just yet. We'll do some editing in later videos. But for now, uh, let's see how we can save this document. Now, the, the normal save, or save as, that will save documents in this .rube form which contains all the information that the editor needs to come back to this file later and continue editing it. But that's not really the, the file that you need to be using if you want to export this information for use in your game. Uh, to do that you would want to do export scene as raw info. Now this raw info is um, we'll go into the details of this later as well but uh, it contains the actual individual fixtures. Probably the biggest difference between this rube.rube format and the normal raw info format, which is saved typically saved as a .json 
uh, file extension is that in the exported scene all of the fixtures here are exported in a format that Box 2D can use so they will be um, no more than eight vertices and they will be wound counterclockwise uh, but as you can see in what we have here this fixture has a lot more than eight vertices and Box 2D can't use it like that so that's the biggest difference between these file formats and you can also um, if you don't want to import the JSON into your program you can actually save this file as source code uh, that's C++ source code so what that does is it just uses the the standard Box 2D uh, function that that Aaron wrote to dump this scene as C++ code that you can just copy and paste into your program and replicate the scene. So what we'll do here is um, well we haven't really changed anything but we'll just save this anyway because I want to show you a couple of things that happen on disk when we save these files. So what we've been uh, talking about stuff there's a couple of folders here that have been made document A and B backups and we'll just look at one of these here document A in here we have a couple of files um, so one of them is a script log and we'll look at what we can do with those a little bit later in another video but this one at the bottom here, this .rub file, that is basically the file that was there before we saved this one. So it doesn't overwrite the file, it moves the, pre uh, the previous file that was there and attaches this name to it. So this is the, um, the current time and yeah, it just moves it into this, files, uh, into this folder so that you don't, you don't actually lose that data. And this one here, um, let's just have a look at that one. Okay, this is a script log. So everything that you do uh, actually runs through, is actually executed by script. So every time you move something in the in the program, a little piece of script is created and executed to do that. And all of those script ex executions are stored here in this log. So what we can do is we'll say we will uh, I'll just select that body and I will delete it. Now if we come back here we'll see this uh, file has been changed so if we reload this file we'll see a few things uh, that these script functions that have been executed. So we'll go into script in much more detail later on but just for now what I wanted to point out was that everything that you do right at the point that you do it is being recorded in the script log file so this is quite handy as um, an autosave file so that if you have a power cut or you spill coffee on your laptop or whatever and um, you lose well you, the program shuts down for whatever reason you'll still have this file here and this file can be um, used to run a script which will replicate the, file, uh, the the scene as you had it before so what, we'd work, what we can do here is I'll just copy this whoops, copy, copy this little piece of script and I'll come back to the editor and I'll just undo the deletion and I'll open up the script window here get rid of that and I'll paste this little bit of script in here and I'll just run it so that will replicate the deletion that I just did. So that's what script locks do. Um, and that's about it for this video, but I just wanted to look at one or two little things that are good to know. Under the help menu here, um, you have a couple of things here, check for updates, and that will connect to the server and it will just check to see if there are new versions of the software. If there are new versions, um, it will show you the script log, uh, like, where are we? Here. So you'll see a, 
a um, a bunch of release notes in that dialog that we just saw if there have been changes. So sometimes there's a new update to the program but it might not affect you and you not you don't really care or something so you can quickly tell that here if, if um, something that you need is actually there or not and whether you want to download it you can figure that out straight away. Um, and lastly we have uh, this one here, send feedback. So here you can type in a little message and you don't need to go to forums or um, send an email or anything like that. This is a quick way to just sort of send some feedback or ask a question or report bugs or whatever. And if necessary you can also attach a screenshot here. This will just take a screenshot of this this window as it currently exists and that can be sometimes quite handy to to attach extra information. Um, unfortunately this doesn't work on macOS on versions after Lion so it, it works on everything before Lion so up until Snow Leopard but from Lion onwards it doesn't work unfortunately the screenshot that, that only that is. Alright so yeah that's about it and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.